Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. This is the video I wish I didn't have to make. Gosh, I wish somebody else had made it because we're going to be talking about troubleshooting and optimizing Pro Tools. There is a dearth of good information when it comes to troubleshooting and optimizing Pro Tools. Usually when you have a problem with Pro Tools, you search around, try and find the information, and you just keep coming back to trash the preferences. And it's not very helpful. I have been going through a hell of a time with Pro Tools over the last three weeks. I even spent the $80 on that Avid support code, which is very depressing. And hey, the tech support people were extremely helpful. They showed me some great optimizations, but frankly, they are optimizations that should have been freely available on the Avid site and just aren't. So I'm going to share them with you because you should know everything that you need to know. Okay. First, before we get into it, I do want to say that I work on an Intel based iMac. If you're working on an Apple Silicon product or you're working on Windows, that's going to be a little different. The ideas are generally the same, but where you find things might be a little bit, well, different. So especially for the Windows people, I do apologize to you, but I think the idea is going to communicate and you're going to be able to kind of follow along anyway. Okay, so let's start with the primary troubleshooting move, which is what we all have seen a million times, and that is trash your preferences. I don't want to spend a long time on it, but I do want to show you how to do it because it is valuable information. So in our finder window, we are going to click go. We are going to hold down option. Option is going to make our library appear. Okay, this is our hidden secret child proofing library. Why they do this, I don't know, but hey, here we are. We're going to go into this library, and from there, we are going to scroll down, and we are going to look for our preferences. From our preferences, we are going to go to Avid, Pro Tools, and we are going to delete these, and we are going to look for anything over here that has anything to do with Avid as well. So on the latest operating system, I don't see too many Avid things, but here we have our Avid Link plist and our Avid Pro Tools plist uh, right here. We're going to have to get rid of those as well. So that's how we trash our preferences. We get rid of the whole Avid folder and the couple of little things that are just free floating in the preferences. And that is our first move. Now, a lot of the times that does not solve the issue, but sometimes it at least ameliorates the issue or helps. It is the number one step. Okay, now, if you've had the more common problem that this does not solve of opening Pro Tools, specifically opening a session you've been working on, and then as it opens, it just crashes, either you get the session open, it stalls out, and then crashes, or the session doesn't even open up at all, and then just shuts itself down. What's going on there? The solution to that is plug-in cycling. This is very, very annoying, <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to do it, Brace yourself, you're going to hate it. So we go, go back over to our Finder window here again. We're going to go to our main hard drive. We are going to go to our main unchild safety library. We are going to go to our application support, Avid. Yep, still going to subfolders here. We are going to go to audio, and we are going to go to our plugins. This is all of the plugins that Pro Tools is going to be accessing when it opens. In order to plug in cycle, we are going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this dummy access or something like that. It's something that Pro Tools is not going to read. I go into my main plugin folder and I'm going to scroll all the way down, hold down shift and select everything in this folder. I am then going to pull everything from this folder into the dummy access folder. So now my plugins folder is going to be empty and my dummy access is going to have all of my plugins in it. The next step is going to be to open Pro Tools. Pro Tools will no longer see any of your plugins. You are going to then save and quit Pro Tools and then you are going to start loading in your plugins from the dummy access folder back into the main plugins folder going about 30 plugins at a time. So copying them over, and then once you copy those 30 over, you are going to open Pro Tools again, and then quit Pro Tools. Then you are going to go back to the dummy access folder and pull the next 30 plugins in and move them over to that main plugins folder. And you are going to repeat this process of opening Pro Tools, quitting Pro Tools, moving 30 plugins into the main folder, opening Pro Tools, quitting Pro Tools, moving the next 30 into that folder again and again and again and again until you get through all of your plugins. 
seconds, which is very tedious and annoying, but that is how you fix that problem of Pro Tools crashing upon opening. Annoying. Okay, so those are our main two troubleshooting issues. Now let's talk about our optimizations. So the optimizations are going to kind of couple in on themselves to make the performance of Pro Tools better and better and better. The overarching idea here is that Pro Tools is designed and tested on a little machine that's by itself. It's not tested with every case scenario of connecting your Apple iPhone to your iMac or running different internet programs or you know accessing the iCloud or things like that. Like that Pro Tools is still kind of in the mindset of thinking of your computer as a tape machine. It's meant to stand alone, isolated as much as possible, and all of the optimizations kind of play into that idea. So let's take a look at the recommended optimizations. Most of these are going to happen in your system preferences. So now it's called system settings. I'm going to open that up. Okay. And we are going to go through the ones that are on the website, and then we are going to go through the ones that are not on the website. Okay, so system preferences. First thing, the energy and battery saving. That one's an easy one. We just click over here to energy saver and we want to make sure that our power nap is not on. Why the power nap? That makes no sense, right? Well, it's because your power nap communicates with the iCloud and anything communicating with iCloud is going to be problematic for Pro Tools. So we're going to want to make sure that we have that turned off. Next, we are going to want to have our Wi-Fi off, if possible. We are going to want to use an Ethernet cable to connect to the Internet. If we can't, we can't. Having the Wi-Fi on is not the end of the world, but it is going to help things a little bit if the Wi-Fi is off. So we go over to our Wi-Fi, we turn it off, and similarly, if we can get our Bluetooth off, that's going to be better as well. Now, I cannot turn off my Bluetooth because I have a Bluetooth keyboard connected. So I'm keeping my Bluetooth on. Okay, that's one optimization, not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, you might not have this issue, so you can probably get your Bluetooth off as well. Okay, next we are going to want to go to our privacy and security, and there are a few optimizations in here that are actually pretty important. The first one's really easy. We want to have our file vault turned off. Here we can see that it is off. It is uh, I mean, if I click this, it'll turn back on, but I've already turned it off. So you want to make sure that that, in fact, is off. The other thing that we want to make sure of is that Pro Tools can access the parts of your disk that it needs to access. And that's going to happen in some main areas, one being our microphone. This is not the biggest deal, but there are Pro Tools playback engines that require access to the microphone. We don't want to mess that up. Uh, full disk access. We are going to absolutely want to make sure that Pro Tools has access to the full disk. And lastly, accessibility. We are going to want to make sure that Pro Tools has access to whatever the accessibility is. I'm not really a computer guy. I just know that these are things that are going to help. Okay. Uh, moving down, we are also going to want to make sure that our automatic updates are off. So if we go into our uh, system preferences here again, and we go over to where it says software updates, which is probably somewhere else. Ah, here we go, software updates. We're going to want to make sure that the automatic updates are turned off. All right, cool. So the last one that Pro Tools uh, Avid Site is recommending is also just to make sure that your iLock drivers are up to date. Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, that helps because that's something Pro Tools is accessing while you use it. Okay, let's move on to the things that are not mentioned on the Avid site that frankly probably should be. Okay, the first one is going to be our displays. So our displays, we are going to want to make sure are set in a very specific way. First, we're going to want to make sure that the automatic adjust uh, brightness adjustment is turned off. This is something that accesses the internet in order to work, and so it's one of those things where it's communicating with an outside source in order to give you the brightness that the time of day would benefit from. Make sure that is turned off. Next, go to your color profile. Chances are your color profile is going to be on its default. In this case, the default is iMac. And it might be on some of these other ones. I don't know, really depends on your system. But the one that you want to have selected is this SRGB IEC 61966-21. That is the recommended one. Pro Tools does not get along with anything complicated happening on the graphics side of things. Uh, issues with graphics cards 
really, really tank Pro Tools pretty quick. And just in general, graphic issues, not where Pro Tools shines. So the other thing that we want to make sure is if you're on a 4K or a 5K system, you really want to make sure that the absolute highest that you're setting your resolution is actually 2K. Anything above that, you're going to start seeing some performance issues. And to be honest, I changed this even lower just to see what would happen. I went down to 1680 by 945, which is below 2K, and I saw an immediate improvement. So I actually recommend going lower than 2K, making sure that none of the resolution values actually exceed 2K at all. If you cannot see this, you might need to click show all resolutions in order to get these options available. So just letting you know that. Okay, next, let's talk about the handoff. So this is one that doesn't necessarily affect Pro Tools performance until it does. But basically, uh, Pro Tools does not like when anything from the outside is communicating with it. So where is my handoff? My handoff is general, right? We go under general and we go to airdrop and handoff. And we want to make sure that we do not allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. Notice the word iCloud again, does not like to talk to the iCloud. The iCloud devices are things like your iPhone. So you want to make sure that this is disabled. Why? Because if you get a text message or a phone call while you are using Pro Tools, Pro Tools is going to stall out. I've had that happen a bunch of times. This will prevent that. I don't know if it generally improves performance, but it's certainly going to get around that annoying little aspect of things. Okay, we are also going to want to disable any kind of communication with the iCloud. The way we do that is we go under our Apple ID. We're going to go under our iCloud. And then we are going to make sure that the iCloud drive is off. Uh, I think turning off photos is probably a good idea as well. I haven't done that. Things seem to be running okay for now. So for the photos are currently still on. But the main thing is to disable the iCloud drive. We want to make sure that that is off. And I've also clicked off optimized Mac storage, which is something that is going to communicate with the iCloud drive as well. So we're turning off anything relating to the iCloud drive. If you're on Windows, you probably are not going to have this problem. But if there is some kind of an automatic backup thing going on with Windows, probably are going to want to disable that as well. Uh, the other thing that involves automatic backups is going to be your time machine. So one thing you definitely don't want to be doing, if you're running Pro Tools off of a dedicated hard drive, you know, I, I use my solid state drives here, you do not want to be running a time machine backup on the same drive as the session that you are using for Pro Tools for sure. In general, I actually completely disable the time machine. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head where that is. Uh, general, it's under general. Okay, so general time machine and then make up I just have no backup disk doing the time machine at all that's just me um, this one you know eh, there's a trade-off there because time machine can be pretty useful in case you need to go back to something like if something goes wrong and you're having some kind of catastrophic failure time machine will allow you to reverse to before that happened and so there's a lot of benefits to running time machine Play that one by ear, make your own determination. I decided to disable it. You might not want to. I would say try all the other optimizations first and see how things go. Okay, lastly, we want to remove the Pro Tools audio bridge. If you're on the latest version of Pro Tools, they have a new feature called the audio bridge. The audio bridge allows you to access different interface ins and outs without changing the playback engine. And what I've found is that it basically doesn't work. It's horribly glitchy. It pretty much, it, if it doesn't crash your Pro Tools immediately, it's gonna stall it to like 100% CPU use and it's terrible. So what you do is you go down here to Avid Uninstallers, you go to uninstall Pro Tools audio bridge command. You just double click this and it removes the audio bridge. If you need to run multiple interfaces at the same time, you can go to your audio MIDI settings and create an aggregate Pro Tools out that uses multiple interfaces at the same time. That is what I do when I record my ScreenFlow broadcasts and it works very smoothly. Okay, so we get rid of that. Now, lastly, inside of Pro Tools itself, there are a couple of features we want to make sure are going on here under the playback engine. 
we want to make sure that we have our sample size set to the highest that we can for our purposes. So if we are recording, we probably do not want to have a sample size higher than 128. I typically try to re record at 64. Uh, however, once we start mixing, we really want to be starting at 256 or 512 or even 1024. Uh, hopefully, if your system is optimized really well, then you are going to be able to run any of those just fine. Under here, we are going to want to click ignore errors during playback and record. So main playback engine and your aux IOs. And then we are also going to want to uh, limit the number of real time threads. We want to make sure that both of those are checked. The other ones are a little bit more optional. I have them all working. Uh, but they're not as important as those two. So those are going to help the performance inside of Pro Tools as well. If we have done all of these things, chances are we are going to be able to run Pro Tools at its best. At its best does not necessarily mean error-free, but it means certain things that we would not expect to happen will not be happening. Things like if we leave Pro Tools idle for 30 minutes and we come back, sometimes we get playback errors from doing that. By following these optimizations, those playback errors are going to go away. So hopefully this really helps you guys out. Um, obviously, one of the things that I recommended when I was discussing just Avid in general is having a system that is not Pro Tools. In reality, the fact that you have to go through all of these optimizations, it feels like user error. And and people will say, oh, it's user error. You had the wrong display color up there. Well, it's not really user error if, A, you can't find that in the resources provided on the website, and B, if there's so many user errors that it starts to make you think like, well, maybe it's not like if there's a thousand user errors, is it really still user error anymore? Not so much. So I would say if you're not already integrated into the Pro Tools ecosystem, which I very much am because I'm accessing Pro Tools from years ago, start with something else you might have a better experience. I think you probably will. But okay, so all that being said, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Follow these instructions. I think you're going to get better results out of Pro Tools. Let's wrap it up here. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. If you want to learn about recording and mixing and not dealing with this nonsense, join Weiss Advice. We get into the creative stuff. We get into the technical stuff. We have weekly webinars. We have tons of free downloads, all sorts of wonderful things that are going to make your recording and mixing experience a million times better. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.